Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are, and welcome to another live stream of The Angry Astronaut. And we're kind of dealing with a little bit of an unusual topic today, but it's uh, very timely because this only just came out. And this is an article from The New Yorker that uh, is very uh, critical of Virgin Galactic and is suggesting that uh, Unity is a uh, flawed and dangerous spacecraft, or at least this seems to be that kind of uh, warning about it right now. I actually have the article um, pulled up at the moment, and uh, it is entitled, and this is one of the issues that I have, the red warning light on Richard Branson's Space flight, and they call it the red warning light, but according to the article, the red light didn't even go off. Um, instead, it was a yellow light. If a red light had gone off on the flight, um, that would have been significantly more serious. So I don't know, and unless I'm missing something in the article here, um, the, the title itself uh, seems to be a little misleading, but once again, I don't want to, you know, get off, right off the bat um, slamming on the article. Instead, I just kind of wanted to get an idea of what they're trying to say, whether or not the concern that's being expressed here is really valid. Um, the New Yorker, uh, in my experience, um, not to, you know, I, I don't have any problem with a lot of the articles that they write, but they do tend to stir things up a lot. Um, the New Yorker does seem to enjoy publishing articles that stir up uh, controversy and uh, not to say that it's you know misleading or trash media or anything like that. They're not. But at the same time, um, you know, they they'll do things to to get readers. Um, it's also interesting to note that the author of this article actually has a book um that he that he released about uh virgin galactic called test gods virgin galactic and the making of a modern astronaut um and that also uh at least as near as i can tell seems to be pretty critical of the virgin galactic culture um and the lack of uh the lack of um safety that sort of thing so you know it, Usually when I see stuff like this, I tend to, you know, I, I don't know enough about rocket science, you know, or aviation engineering to be critical or not. Um, instead, I just think about common sense, all right? And one of the things that this article says is that a flight that took place in February of 2019, which um, if I remember correctly, that is the most recent test that actually had human beings on board that made it to space um, went very, very badly. Um, it had some, some serious issues that, according to one of their former employees, um, could very well have ended up in the death of all three people on board. Um, now, you know, I've actually, uh, I've, I've included the footage of that very flight on some of my videos. Um, I've seen no visual evidence of anything really serious going on on the particular flight, but at the same time, I don't have a really trained eye or anything like that. Um, but, you know, what I need to, uh, what, what makes me wonder is if, if that flight went that badly, if things were looking like, you know, if the situation was looking like that this was a flying death trap, then does Sir Richard Branson have a death wish? Are, you know, because he, he should, if, if that flight went that poorly and there was no other test flights to speak of, at least nothing that went to space between that particular flight and the, uh, the flight in July, um, then, you know, uh, Sir Richard had a pretty serious death wish and was taking a massive risk in that particular case. And so too was Beth Moses, who was on that flight in 2019. Um, her presence in the article is actually glossed over. She's just described as an engineer 
Um, that kind of makes me wonder a little bit also as to the thoroughness of this article, because um, I think that it, you know, it, she should have at least have been mentioned by name um, because she's a very prominent individual at Virgin Galactic. And if things had gone that south, that far south during that particular flight, then she must have had some pretty serious guts um to get back in that thing and fly again um you know that with so few tests uh taking place between the two flights so i'm i'm not saying i'm not necessarily calling bullshit on this okay but at the same time i'm i'm a little um i'm a little skeptical about what they're what they're trying to say. The now one thing we do know for certain is that Unity went off course during that July flight. It strayed outside of the FAA um, flight path, and as a result, um, a yellow light, not a red light, a yellow light came up uh, on the um, on on the flight instruments and warning the pilots that they were off course and they needed to make an adjustment um, in order to get back on course and to achieve the proper altitude and to be able to glide safely back to the uh, to the landing strip. If that yellow light had turned into a red light, um, then that would have been a, a very critical issue. The problem is, I don't see any evidence in here to indicate that the red light even happened, that there was a red light. So yeah, um, they went off the FAA flight plan for about a minute and a half. Um, also, it's suggested, by the way, not only in this article, but in some of the uh, other media sources that are quoting this article, that because um, Unity went off course, um, that it theoretically represented a threat to other aircraft in the area. Now, I'm calling bullshit on that one um, because the uh, that particular spaceport where Unity flies out of is right where the White Sands uh, missile test range is. It is some of the most strictly controlled airspace on the planet. There wouldn't be an aircraft within 50 miles of the uh, of the Unity at that time. So yeah, I'm definitely calling bullshit on that one. Um, Unity, regardless of how far it may have strayed off course, um, it definitely didn't represent a threat to any other aircraft unless that aircraft was straying over White Sands, uh, the White Sands testing area, um, which would have been a serious violation of uh, aviation regulations and probably would have resulted in somebody getting a big fine and possibly even jail time for doing that. So I, I have to ask the question, the, the timing of this is very interesting because Virgin Galactic just announced the, the uh, timing for their next flight. It's uh, being done um, for, I don't, I'm, I'm, forgive me, it's being done for an Italian interest um, that's doing some uh, Z microgravity experiments. Uh, three of the four crew members are Italians and the fourth would be a Virgin Galactic um, employee and they were going to be doing the launch uh, during the fall. And then all of a sudden the FAA comes out with a uh, restrictions, you know, saying that they are going to have to do an investigation of why this uh, vessel, why Unity went off course before they can fly again. And of course, all of us um, are very familiar with how the FAA handles space flight. Um, it's just, you know, they, they, they really have an outdated uh, manner of dealing with space flight safety. I mean, space flight is not aviation. It just isn't. It's never going to be as safe as aviation, or at least it's not going to be for a very long time. So it can't be held to these same um, standards. So I can't help but wonder, and once again, I have no proof of this. But I can't help but wonder, did this article come out at a convenient time when Jeff Bezos is trying to um, sell his particular uh, space tourism service? Once again, I am in no way saying that 
that he did this or anything because I've no proof of that, but I have to admit it kind of makes me wonder a little bit on the, the timing of this because Virgin Galactic is still in the process of selling tickets right now. Their stock price dropped as a result of this article. Um, and I have stock in, in Virgin Galactic, by the way. Um, so this is something that I noticed. So, you know, is 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 this what's going on or 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 is this valid? Is everything that they're saying here? True. I I really don't know. By the way, um, we have a fair number of people watching. Thank you so much. Uh, please like, please subscribe. Um, and any, you know, the, the other support that I've received in the past from these live streams, I really appreciate everything that you guys do for me right now. Um, it's, I tell you, the timing couldn't be better for a lot of the support that I've been getting lately on PayPal and elsewhere. So thank you so much for that. Okay, let's have a look at some of the uh, some of the remarks. We're having a lot of a uh, lot of stuff that's come up uh, actually on Discord from when I've been speaking about uh, some of my Patreon members. Um, Abigail Dante says, "I personally don't trust the Virgin Galactic start spaceship yet. Uh, it's only had a handful of flights and crashed one of them. Yes, that's true. Um, it hasn't hasn't flown nearly as much as New Shepard has. Um, that is a very good point." Um, the crash was pilot error. The controls have been updated to say, solve that problem, it says Probus. Yes, um, that is also the case. What caused the, the crash, um, that particular crash that resulted in the death of the co-pilot, um, the tragic death of, of that individual at that time, was that they unlocked the feathering mechanism on the uh, wings. The wings have to move into a different configuration when the ship uh, goes into uh, into space and they unlocked that early in the process and so the the wings feathered um, too soon and the ship was ripped apart by uh, by the updraft is my understanding of it so the the thing of it is though is that there was the, even though it was in the training manual, there was no real extreme emphasis placed on it. Like, do not do this at this speed. Otherwise, it's going to be a serious problem. You know, nothing like that was in the training manual. So I don't think that Virgin Galactic even really understood how dangerous this was at the time. And so they have corrected it since then um, and uh, made it so that it is physically impossible to unlock the feathering system prior to the ship uh, achieving um, supersonic flight. Um, so in any event, that's what caused that. And it was cr corrected a long time ago. But this is talking about stuff that's handled that's happened a lot more recently. And uh, and of course, it's the source that's that's uh, saying that all of this has happened is one individual, one test pilot um, who was, um, I believe, he was actually the manager of safety uh, at Virgin Galactic for a while, um, and then after this book came out um, that's attached to this New Yorker article, after the book came out, that's when um, he was fired, um, and. You know, I we always see how little inside information gets released by SpaceX, how seldom we see any sort of insider info from that. I think that there's a good reason that Elon keeps, you know, keeps his employees from saying anything. Why he's so obsessive about them keeping their mouths shut, because if they don't, this is the sort of stuff that tends to happen. You know, if any information gets out, even if it is, you know, and this may be true, who knows? But, you know, it, it has a very, very significant impact, obviously, on the future of the company um, when these sorts of things happen. Um, once again, the the book that's attached to this New Yorker article, the, the New Yorker article, once again, I'm giving this guy publicity, but at the same time, I suppose may as well. It's called The Red Warning Light on Richard Branson's Space Flight. And once again, the book... Um, is entitled Test Gods, Virgin Galactic, and the Making of a Modern Astronaut. Um, once again, kind of a, a book that seems to be very critical of Virgin Galactic's, uh, Virgin Galactic's test process, 
their safety methods, that sort of thing. Um, so it is, uh, it's highly controversial. And so, you know, that's typical, obviously, of the media um, these days. Let's have a look and see what else. Um, the FAA for aircraft is living in the 1930s, says Darth Rust, with a light sprinkling of modern communications and jet engines. The commercial space flight division is new, eager, and cutting the jungle back as best they can, but they're not getting the guidance budget or legislative environment to be effective. Um, and then uh, Johnny Spacer says, Spaceship 2 relies on two human pilots, no automated systems. Yeah, um, for the most part, that, that very much is true. Um, Virgin Galactic is old fashioned in that regard. They have, the, the human element is big with them. Um, they have highly trained and very, very competent test pilots um, who, uh, who, who are contributing to this and uh, you are, you know, participating in these missions. And I'll tell you, I would prefer to put my life in the hands of people with that kind of skill rather than in an automated system. It's just a personal preference of mine, but I am a big fan of very highly skilled human pilots as the uh, as Sully and the famous landing on the Hudson would indicate. Um, you know, I'm, there's no way an automated system could have done what that man did. Um, by the way, uh, Louis, thank you so much, uh, or Louis, I'm not sure, I, this is Canadian, so thank you so much. I really do uh, appreciate the, uh, the super chat there. Um, big help to me. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, I, you know, that's, that's kind of what I wanted to get online is to ask, you know, who thinks if this is real and who thinks that this is, you know, slightly modified truth that might be, you know, working to the benefit of New Shepard and, uh, and Blue Origin. You know, I mean, what's your gut telling you? Because there's no proof, obviously, at all that Jeff is involved in this kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, what What are oh, we just uh, just something came popped up there. We got some some votes coming up. So uh, thanks. I appreciate that. Uh, my partner in crime in uh, in Yorkshire helping out. And by the way, definitely um, wearing a bit of merch as well. Um, the Mars Base uh, Alpha uh, line that I have um, to put a base on Phobos. Uh, the my ideas behind that. I made a few videos about that. And one of my supporters, um, he created this uh, this design for a uh, Mars Base Alpha kind of uniform, that sort of thing. Um, so that's uh, up for sale along with my other merch as well. Okay, enough uh, self-promotion. So let's have a look and, and see uh, what what else is, is going on here. But yeah, that, that is what I'm interested in. You know, how, how are people saying that, um, Oh wow, 100 percent people liking it. Thank you very much. I really do appreciate that. That was that was a quick poll, but thanks very much. Really do appreciate folks uh, supporting me here. So um, yeah, it's a hit piece designed to sell a book. You know something, Thomas? Um, I I kind of agree with you. Um, you know, if they if there wasn't such a big uh, mention of this book in the article, if it wasn't, you know, kind of tagged at the end of the article, that sort of thing, um, I would give a lot more credence to this. But instead, it seems like this this controversial thing going after one of these famous billionaires, going after Richard Branson. Um, and, you know, and obviously that's going to sell a lot of copies. It just is. There's, you know, a lot of people who don't like Richard Branson, um, who are just inclined to, to dislike the fellow. So as a result, if they see that there's a book out saying that Virgin Galactic is unsafe and he's pushing an unsafe uh, space tourism uh, you know, agency, yeah, that's going to sell a lot of copies, regardless of whether it's true or not. Um, and that always kind of makes me a little, eh, you know, it kind of, kind of, kind of makes me doubt the uh, the situation a little bit. But once again, you never can tell. You you, you can't tell for certain. Um, he does have a solid inside source. There's no question about that. He does have a good inside source, a source that might be inclined to be 
biased a source that might be inclined to be a little pissed off at Virgin Galactic and so might have his own agenda, but still at the same time, um, you know, he, he, he was definitely somebody who was heavily involved in the whole safety aspect of the Virgin Galactic, uh, you know, in, the whole, the, in their ship, in Unity, in space tourism, etc. So maybe, you know, maybe, uh, maybe this is true. It's hard to say, but once again, as I said before, if it is true, then this means that, you know, that uh, Sir Richard's definitely got a serious death wish. He's definitely doesn't give a damn about, you know, what happens to him if he's rolling the dice with such a deeply flawed vessel. And also, of course, uh, Beth Moses as well on board. She flew. This was her second time on the ship. And if it was, um, if the first flight was that harrowing and that dangerous, um, boy, I'll tell you, uh, she's got to have a seriously strong work ethic and a lot of loyalty to Virgin Galactic to go up in that thing again. Um, and she did. She she flew in it, and uh, from all the all the footage that we have of you know what she was saying during the flight, how she was talking to Sir Richard during the flight, etc. She seemed very relaxed. As a matter of fact, she was having a lot of fun during the flight. So she's either the best damn actress on the planet, or she wasn't really that concerned. Um, and if there's anybody who would have known about how dangerous that February 2019 flight was, it would have been her because she was on board. So, you know, I mean, she was right there with the pilots. So that being the case, I can't imagine um, her being that relaxed, that, you know, th that upbeat, um, having that much fun in microgravity and being um, terrified at the same time of, of, you know, possibly dying at any moment. Um, but once again, who knows? Um, maybe she was just dedicated enough to, to be that way or to just believe in it. Um, you know, who knows? Um, but I'm just really doubtful. I, I have to say, I, I really have some serious doubts about this article. Um, so we shall see. Would you ride to space with Virgin? There's, there's my question there. By the way, my answer is yes. If Sir Richard it feels that it's safe enough to put, him, put himself in one of those seats, then I would take the same risk. Um, and who knows? I might die for taking that risk. But, you know, to go to space, especially um, on that kind of roller coaster ride that, uh, that VSS Unity presents, um, that would be an amazing thing. Uh, here, thank you very much for the super chat. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm pregnant. Uh, Sir Goosey, I believe. I bet Dr. Evil of our times will do everything he can to get his membership rocket to fly. Yes, um, I would say that once again, I, it's just, it seems way too beneficial, way too beneficial to, uh, to Blue Origin and to New Shepard. This article seems to play very much into their agenda and be very beneficial to that company and to New Shepard and to that brand of space tourism than it's going to be um, otherwise. So yeah, this one, we got a, uh, there was one of those quick polls again, but two thirds of our viewers said that they would fly to space with Virgin. So we got some brave people here, definitely. And I'm one of you, just so you know, I would be one of you. Um, I would say, yeah, I, I agree, Johnny Spacer. The risk of driving is higher than flying. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, so far, yes, we did have one tragic fatality um, on, you know, on Spaceship Two, but that was a very long time ago. It's been corrected since then, and we haven't had any serious issues since then. As far as we know, once again, you know, if you believe what this article says, then there have been serious issues. There was, a, you know, a serious issue in 2019 that very well could have ended with the death of everybody on board. But once again, I, I just, I don't know. I, I don't buy it. I, I'll be honest. I, I don't buy it. Um, it might have been, you know, things may have gone south to some degree, but not to what, you know, what this article describes. I just can't imagine that Beth Moses would have 
after experiencing something like that a couple of years ago would have been that comfortable going back up on that thing, especially when it had not really been to space with human passengers since then. Um, I just, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. But uh, it just, it kind of goes contrary to common sense as far as I'm concerned. Um, I signed up for the chance, says the hopeful astronaut, I signed up for the chance of winning the flight on the Virgin Galactic space plane. Uh, well, thank you. I, that's very, very, actually, it's for two people. Um, so, hey, I could be, I could be passenger number two. That'd be awesome. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I signed up to win uh, as well. Um, I think it's a, uh, a very um, exciting uh, possibility. The incident was overblown. Um, we have another comment here. It just went outside the planned flight envelope. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking too. I'm thinking that this was nowhere near as serious as as we're being led to believe, and um, and this is just really uh, just the media trying to uh, trying to sell copies of The New Yorker, trying to sell copies of a book, and kind of overstating this. That's just my personal opinion, and I could be wrong, and it's not based on anything except what I regard as common sense. You know, common sense tells me that Sir Richard Branson would not fly, go up on something that was that dangerous, neither would Beth Moses or any of these other people. I really think that that would just be a crazy risk to take. And if it was, if it did have that many issues, they would send it up with test pilots a couple more times um, before they put the CEO of the company on the, on the ship. Um, that seems a little nuts to me as far as I'm concerned. So I don't know. I really don't know. Um, but anyway, uh, the, um, we'll see what happens with this FAA investigation. It's going to uh, reveal a great deal, but my opinion is is that the FAA will not find anything serious, um, that they will green light the next flight, which is going to be taking place during the fall. Um, and once again, it is a scientific mission. Um, oh yeah, the, the cup, anybody asking about the cup? Um, this Blue Origin cup, if once I hit 90,000 subs, this is going to be my new two-stage rocket. I'm going to blow up, I mean, uh, launch uh, this plus a Boeing uh, coffee cup, one on top of the other. New poll comes up. Will the FAA green light the uh, next flight, or are they going to stop it? Interesting question. And once again, who knows what's uh, you know what's going on with them? In my opinion, they're going to look at this and say, okay, there was a brief uh, period of time that the ship was outside the approved flight flight path, but that's the only issue that we had. There were no problems. They came back down safely. No injuries. As a matter of fact, I mean, nobody seemed to even be that worried about it. I mean, I would assume that, you know, that the people on the ship, especially they had, you know, an, AV, an aeronautics engineer on board as well. You would think that he would be aware of something going seriously wrong. And yet he was just having fun with the rest of them, you know, in microgravity. So once again, I don't know. Um, thank you for the super chat. Why didn't we hear from the FAA immediately after why? so late now um it who knows it could be that the um that uh virgin galactic tried to cover it up however that seems highly unlikely to me because this thing was on radar the entire time so how could virgin galactic have, have concealed this from the faa it seems almost impossible to me. This thing was being tracked the entire time. The FAA should have been very aware of what was happening with it. It is possible that they were looking at this and saying, okay, is this really serious enough for us to actually trigger an investigation? It, that's, that's my opinion, is the FAA took a month reviewing this to say, do we really need to make a big deal about this was this you know was this deviation from the planned flight flight path was this serious enough for us to investigate it and after a month of deliberating they finally decided to do it 
on especially, and the timing was interesting because it was within 12 hours of Virgin Galactic making their announcement that they were going to fly in the autumn, that their next flight was going to be going up. And by the way, it's a scientific mission, um, not space tourism, but instead a microgravity scientific mission being uh, conducted by, and once again, I'm forgetting um, exactly the organization. I'm gonna have to look that up, but an, an Italian scientific concern um, that's involved uh, three Italians on board along with a Virgin Galactic employee is the next flight. So we'll we'll see what happens. Um, please like, please subscribe. And by the way, you guys that have uh, been jumping in and uh, helping out with super chats and such, thank you so much. It makes a huge difference to me. And by the way, real quick, today is a double header day. I am releasing not only this live stream, but also a recorded video as well, where once again, I will be going after Blue Origin, um, but not, not in the traditional or on the traditional topics. It's uh, to give you guys a little bit of a heads up. It's going to be where the hell are my engines? Jeff is going to essentially be the topic. Um, so uh, that's a little sneak preview since the Atlas V is being retired by ULA without any guarantees that Vulcan is going to be ready when they need it. Um, that's a big gamble that ULA is taking right now, and that's what this video is about. So everybody uh, keep that in mind as well. Um, so uh, fairground rides from Virgin, and yeah, it, it, it is. Al, it is correct. For the most part, it is uh, a fairground ride. I mean, back when they were first talking about this in the early 2000s when Spaceship One went up, I mean, this was exciting. Everybody thought this was incredibly exciting. But, you know, since that time, since now we have a, you know, a space tourism flight going up for days into orbit, you know, here very soon, that is a big deal, obviously, and a huge step up from suborbital um, space tourism. Um, will BE-4 be ready or Starship to Mars ready first? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you what I hope happens. I hope the BE-4 is ready first. Um, and the reason for that is there's a lot of important um, Space Force missions and other things that are relying on the Vulcan's increased fairing size um, that requires that. And if they don't get Vulcan, in by the time that they need it, that's going to put the military in a bad state of affairs um, to the point where I think the government should should sue Blue Origin. Certainly ULA should, but yeah, you know, I think even the government should go after them if they don't have those engines ready by the time that they should be ready. Um, that is a that is a serious issue. And thank you, Anton. Them, I really do appreciate that. Thank you. And yeah, we definitely get to see the the total lack of confidence that we have in BE four here. Eight seven percent saying that Starship is going to go to Mars before that is done. <laughs> I'll tell you, if that happens, that's going to put ULA in an early grave. Um, and that's something I don't want to see. I really don't. Um, ULA is embracing innovation. They're embracing reusability in a different way than SpaceX is doing it. But they are being innovative. Um, in, in the next video I'm releasing, Today, um, it's going to have a lot of information about that, um, so stay tuned for that. I'm going to be talking about the innovation that ULA has involved with the Vulcan Centaur, assuming that it's ready to go. And by the way, it's been passing all the rest of its tests with flying colors. Thank you, Greg Houston. My God, thank you so much for that massive super chat. Dear Lord, I really appreciate that. Composites proven over 40 years by Rutan and others. I couldn't agree with you more. Scaled composites as far as, you know, aviation engineers, as far as trusting, you know, an organization to put out a solid and reliable vehicle to, for suborbital space tourism and suborbital flight. I think that they're the ones to go with. And really, Bert Rutan and, and that you know, whole organization, they were the bleeding edge of innovation in spaceflight for the longest time until 
SpaceX took over that position. I mean, think about that. You know, they were the big deal in innovation. And then SpaceX, of course, took over. But still, that doesn't mean that scaled composites doesn't know what they're doing. I think they do. I really think that they do. Um, JNS, thank you so much for the generous super chat. Uh, that's, a, that's a good one, too. Thank you so much. Really do appreciate it. And I'm going to keep those videos coming. No question about it. I'm a member of the Volunteer Mars Colony. We'll not have much life left by the time the Starship's launch on the uh, associated missions. Virgin Galactic would be nice if free. Yeah, well, you know, if, if that whole thing that uh, Sir Richard was talking about where, you know, people uh, make contributions to the charity that's uh, giving folks access to space flight for free, that sort of thing, if that keeps going on top of the initial contest, then, you know, as he said, imagine a world where people can go to space, um, you know, for no charge. Um, that's happening not only with him, it's happening with SpaceX. I mean, we've got um, several people going up here in just a couple of weeks to orbit free of charge. Obviously, at the uh, expense of an extremely rich individual that's uh, that's taking them up. But still, you know, imagine a world where that can happen. You know, no one would have thought that that was even remotely possible 20 years ago. And guess what? In two weeks, it's going to be happening. That's a big deal. That's a huge deal. Um, and, the, and there is there are some scientific uh, experiments going on on that particular crew dragon as well. It's not strictly tourism, just so you know. Um, but nevertheless, um, that is what it is for the most part. And I can't wait to see that that uh, that viewing bubble, that that huge area that you can go up into on uh, crew dragon and get a magnificent look at the uh, at our Earth and at the universe around us. Um, that's some, some amazing stuff, and I am super excited to see what the results of that are. I hope they record a ton of footage of everybody's experience on that Crew Dragon. I think it's going to be an amazing thing. Um, JNS, a new angry advocate, thank you so much uh, for joining up. Really do appreciate it. Um, angry advocates. You can be an angry advocate, by the way, either through Patreon, which I have linked in the description, or by hitting that little join button. Either one, um, you get access to my Discord server. The you, know, you can DM me that sort of thing. Um, a lot of benefits come with uh, with being a supporter of uh, of my channel and an angry advocate. Um, and by the way, here in just a few days, we're going to be announcing the winner of our sweepstakes. Um, that was open to all subscribers and to all um, angry advocates. Um, so we're going to uh, be we're going to be giving away some prizes, including not only my merchandise but also some stuff from Axiom Space, who's one of my uh, most generous supporters. Um, fantastic folks over at Axiom, looking to take the human species into orbit um, and making you know working in space a reality. Um, that is some exciting stuff, uh, to say the least. Um, yes, I do believe, and once again, I'm not sure about the sweepstakes as far as people outside the U.S. I do know that my merchandise is available to people outside the U.S., so I'm, I'm going to have to check on that. Bolts Jet, thank you so much. I'm, I will make an announcement about this, by the way. I'll put out a short um, making sure that people know uh, what the deal is with that. Thank you so much for the super chat. Trying to stay alive long enough to see a man on Mars. Me too. Me too. Uh, no question about that. Um, and I've my my best feelings for you. I'm not sure what your situation is, but uh, it is my my sincerest hope that everybody watching right now, everybody hearing my voice, gets to see mankind take. Uh, you know, to get the human race, take their first steps on the surface of another planet. Um, that will be a magnificent moment in the history of our species and our first step towards becoming a multi-planetary species where 
we can survive for the long term, where even if some cataclysm strikes our own planet, we can still survive in the long run. Um, and that is something I've always believed in um, and behind Elon Musk 100% on that and always will be. And the Starship obviously is the one best way to, to make this happen, no question. Imagine the first person born on Mars, somebody mentioned. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, that's a huge thing as well um, because that person, their entire future is going to be in the solar system, not on Earth. Somebody born in one-third gravity, unless there's some huge breakthroughs made in medical science, will never be able to return to Earth. They simply will not be able to do that. So their future, any human being born on Mars is going to have to stay there or go virtually any place else in the solar system because all the moons of the gas giants, virtually Pluto, virtually every place throughout the rest of the solar system is, you know, Mars gravity or less. Um, and thank you so much. Really do appreciate uh, the super chat that just came in. I've only got a few more minutes um, that I'm going to be spending with you folks, unfortunately, um, because I need to finish this video. Um, got a, a uh, video to uh, submit, but I've got about three or four more minutes that I'm going to stay with you guys. Um, once again, uh, this has been uh, an interesting topic, and it, it definitely seems that the majority of people who have been watching this seem to believe that this uh, this article um, in the New Yorker has been overblown. That the you know the risk involved there is risk un unquestionably. There's risk in going to space. Period. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that uh, that doesn't necessarily mean it's as dangerous as people have been suggesting. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens as far as that's concerned. The FAA is going to reveal a lot of information. Um, they definitely are gonna look into this and then we'll know for certain whether or not this was overblown. Um, if the FAA, uh, you know, and is the article just clickbait just came up? There we go. So we'll see what people's opinions are now. Did the New Yorker, you know, come out with some clickbait on Virgin Galactic? The very title was a little misleading um, because it said the red button on the, or the, the red warning light or whatever on the Virgin Galactic flight on Richard Branson's flight, and yet no red light appeared during the flight. Instead, it was a yellow light saying that they were off course. If it had been a red light, it would have been a really serious issue and they would have had to have aborted at that point. Thomas, thank you so much for the super chat thoughts about Astra and the Firefly launch as well. That is the nature of space. Space is hard. Astra is trying to accomplish um, a very difficult thing, and that is getting, you know, sending up daily flights, sending up small sats on a daily basis for a very low cost. I mean, their their plans are super aggressive. Um, and they've had quite a few failures, so we'll see what happens in that regard. Firefly, none of us should be surprised that that blew up. None of us should be, you know, the first launch of a brand new rocket, you know, for it to have made it, um, it would have been, you know, pretty surprising. By the way, that's one of the reasons why SLS takes as long as it does, although it's still taking way too long. But they can't afford to have SLS blow up on the first flight. That would be unacceptable um, if that were to happen to SLS. So, you know, you're trying desperately to make sure that you're going to have a 100% successful flight. Your first time, how the hell do you pull that off? Well, you check and double check and triple check, and even then, nothing is guaranteed. So we'll see what happens as far as that's concerned. We have just about run out of time. So once again, to quickly review, 80% of people who are watching, by the way, or at least the people who voted, said that the New Yorker article was indeed clickbait. So we shall see. The FAA will reveal information about what happened. I will probably have a video on the topic, and we'll see what ends up happening with this. So until the media actually does report accurately about things that are happening in spaceflight for the benefit 
of people who are thinking about flying, to, about going to space, about flying on a suborbital space tourism flight until they actually start giving us accurate information instead of clickbait, as I think most of us are concluded at this point, for the sake of selling magazines and selling books until we have this breakthrough. And I'm not looking forward to that happening because I don't think it's going to happen. I urge all of you to stay angry about space.